It's another look at Alibaba. It's been dropping since I recommended it. Should you keep buying more? It's better than Tattoo Nutsack. Anyways, we're looking back at Baba since everybody's doing Baba content. I figured I'd revisit it since it's dropping. Okay, so we got our discounted cash flow model here. I did this a little bit differently. I calculated the uh, earnings per share from the, the past five years averaged out. And I did that just to bake in a margin of safety. So right now it's current earnings per share is $8.45. I used $5.14. And we'll look at this in both ways and why I did this in the end. So let's come down here. It has, it's selling for $145. It's selling for $145 per share. Um, that gives it a price to earnings ratio of 17 and it's five years, five years, 23.94. Now in here, you can see I baked in 30% growth over the next decade. Even though Alibaba is great, I think that's a little much. I think 20 to 25% is fair, but I baked in low assumptions, bear cases, 15 and 10%. It generate it should generate a free cash flow of using a multiple of 20 of 19 billion. It generated 23. That would give it an expected market cap of 466 billion dollars. It has a market cap of 394 billion. We have a gram number of 80 and if we look at this in the vein of Total shareholder equity divided by shares outstanding. We get a, that's your book value per share. Just so you know, it's up here. Use that when you're calculating your gram number. And you get $54.45 per share. Add in your cash flows all the way over to 77. Makes sense. Your gram number is usually about a 20% return and we get an average of $93. From a free cash flow perspective, we get $169 to $126 for an average of $148 per share. Now, let's come over here and look at the discounted cash flows. And the last thing we'll look at is something that I have a problem with a lot of YouTubers when they put their price targets out that they don't take this into consideration. It's a relatively minor thing. So we come over here and how I have this set up is 25 price to earnings ratio all the way down to an 11 and everything in between. And I run two different scenarios, a 10% a discount rate and a 15% discount rate just to see where we are. And so we're getting a high end of $525 per share to a low end of $51. Come over here, we average everything out. We get $171 stock, $133 stock. So an average of 152.62. So if, you know, we don't know what it's going to be trading at years from now. Uh, we don't know what its growth rate is going to be. That's why I like to average these numbers together. That gives you an average share price over here of $259. We're at $145. And then factoring in everything else, you get $195 stock. So over here, I used a terminal value of 7 for these cash flows because this is a high growth company. You know, a company like Walgreens, I'm going to use three, but it is what it is. And so we'll look at this last metric. Sorry, I'm high on coffee right now. Anyways, 
this is the main thing that I wanted to get to when I look at a lot of people's their 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 discounted cash flows. The one thing they they don't look at really is what that would give you as a market cap. Okay. So if we grow by 20% per year for the next 10 years, right? Alibaba does. And this isn't even getting into, yeah, I understand the fact that they're American depository receipts. I just don't see the Chinese government um, imploding its biggest company to screw over Western shareholders. I just don't see them doing that because if they did, it would be the death knell of all future investment into the com into the country. So I, I get all that. That's a separate argument. But if we grow at 20% per year for the next decade, you're looking at a $3.6 trillion market cap 10 years from now. Is that, that's 10X, basically that's in actual eight or nine X. Is that pop possible? Boy, I don't know. That's a, I mean, it's possible that it could be trading at that in 2031, but would its revenues justify it? You know, it gets into one of those things when you're looking at market cap of, you know, is it an appropriate price to earnings ratio? At this point, I used a multiple of 15 to figure out on its earnings per share. So, that, you know, that's a, the stock market historical average. But is a $3.6 trillion market cap in 2031 realistic? I don't know. And so that gives us a share price that would give us a terminal value of 1,218 for a 10% return, you're looking at a $469 stock, okay? If we wanted a 20% return, you're trading below a 20% return right now if you believe those numbers. Problem is, I just think that market cap's a little bit steep, so, Let's look at a 20% growth rate. You're looking at a $2.5 trillion market cap. Now, just looking at these numbers, that seems more appropriate to me. And we're almost to a 20% return anyways on this number, $136 for a 20% return, looking at it this way. Um, so, I mean, if you're looking for a 15% return, you're looking at a $208 stock. And if you're looking at a 10% return, that's a $325 stock. So, I mean, looking at it in this way, what would I give a final share price. I honestly think this is probably the most realistic if I had to look at it today with the information at hand. About a $2.5 trillion market cap in 2031 does not seem out of the realm of possibility to me personally. So what, I mean, what would I say? I, I would say, I mean, Undo that. Okay. Let's look at this. I mean, I'm saying this. If you think this is a, if you think this is a, a, a logical outcome, ten years from now, a 2.5 trillion dollar market cap for Alibaba, you're looking at close to an 18 to nine. You're looking at. You're looking at a 19 to 20% return today, if you believe these numbers on Alibaba, which I believe is feasible. That's just my personal, maybe you don't think that a $2.5 trillion market cap 
is feasible for Alibaba in 2031. I believe it is. Um, this is an accounting for shared dilution. You could lower this to point nine because they're, it's about 1% per year. And that still would give you probably a 17% return. Over a 17% return. So what would I say? To me, there is sufficient margin of safety baked in, if you're wrong, to justify purchasing this, purchasing this at $145. And it may continue to drop. But um, yeah, I, I, I think we're definitely still in a buy, you're, you're in a buy range. And it just depends on what you believe. Um, $843 stock all day in 2031, I believe is realistic. I believe that is a realistic possibility. Um, let's see, for a 15, if it returns 15%, grows 15% per year. I mean, even if, I mean, you're looking at over a 10% return, even if you believe that it's only gonna grow at 15% per year for a $1.7 trillion market cap. Um, I don't know, it, it, I, my, my personal viewpoint on it is it's an excellent buy. If you liked it at 180, you should love it at 145. So, you know, I, I'm revisiting this stock and I still think it's a buy if you want to enter in. I just don't believe that China is just going to sink this company. So, I mean, that's all I got. And uh, like and subscribe or don't, but I still think, um, I think Bob is an even better buy now, even when you're looking at extremely conservative numbers. You're looking at conservative numbers of a 5.14 earnings per share, which is below the 8.45 so far this year and the 10.18 of last year. So like and subscribe or don't and I am out.